Ladies and gentlemen, will you please welcome the original Spice Girls, the Vernons Girls. Who wears short shorts? We wear short shorts. Who wears short shorts? We wear short shorts. Brother, please, please come back. We'll make the train going down the track. Don't please, oh, don't leave me. Everybody dates me. It infuriates her. Everybody dates her. It infuriates me. Everybody dates me. You know what I mean. Wow. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please, the Burning Girls. Come on, let's hear this. Oh, a bit of rock and roll there. Good evening. Look at this T-shirt. Lil, dead common. Mind you, it's handy if I get plastered, you know what I mean? And I'm incoherent and I can't speak. People know who I am. They go, look, there's Lil. <laughs> do you have that, my dog's microchipped? You can do that now, you know. You have a little thing put in the back of the neck and if they go missing, like they put one of those supermarket things over them and the name comes up. I've had our beard done while I was at it. <laughs> she goes missing. So if you ever see her in the street now, just whip it into Tesco's and run it over the barcode. <laughs> 
You are, in fact, watching The Lily Savage Show. Now, that's a very unimaginative title. I'm sorry, and I make no apologies for it, because you wouldn't believe the asshole over getting a title together. I mean, honestly, I just think they were electing a pope, because they all sat round upstairs in the boardroom, all the BBC bigwigs, you know, and they were saying, what can we call this? And I lost me rag and went to Blackpool in the end of the weekends. No, I had to, to get away. I mean, I love Blackpool. I don't know how you feel about it. I love it. I tell you what, if you're a slapper who likes a drink, Blackpool is the place to be. <laughs> So I come back refreshed, do you know what I mean? And I come into reception and um, this researcher come hurtling at me and he's screaming, Lily, he said, Lily, I've got some wonderful news for you. I thought, go on, tell me, I'm Huey Green's love child. Go on, make my <laughs> day. He said, no, we've thought of a title. So I said, what are you going to call it? He said, Savage Nights. <laughs> I said, Savage Nights? It sounds like a brand of condom. It does, doesn't it? Savage Nights. <laughs> Savage Nights, long and strong. <laughs> no, and then I said, um, I can't be having this, you know. I said, look, we'll just call it The Lily Savage Show because I am and it is simple, yeah? No, I don't mean I'm No, no, you know what I mean. No, no, it's not easy. I wanted to do it, you know, like a late night Ruby Wax style chat show, you know, where you'd all sit around a table with intellectuals discussing world problems. So we had to go, you know, and we had real alcohol because it loosens people's tongues up, you know? <laughs> we got pissed as far. <laughs> Jeremy Paxman, belted Angus Dayton. <laughs> Joan Plough, right? Vomited all over Jermaine Greer's brogues. <laughs> and Eddie Izzard nicked my handbag. <laughs> and then they said, um, well, how about doing a cookery programme? Well, I don't know about you, but I'm sick of it. Every time you turn the telly on, there's some loony with a wok. I'm sick to death of this. <laughs> I am. And the ingredients, I mean, sprinkle alfalfa lightly. Where the hell are you going to find alfalfa? <laughs> I mean, I've got something that looks like alfalfa growing underneath my sink. I wouldn't put it on a butty, though, I'm telling you. <laughs> I mean, I am a simple girl with simple taste from Birkenhead. I didn't know what black pepper was till I was 30, so I didn't know what alfalfa is. <laughs> I wanted to do an animal programme, you know. You know, one of these, um, I love animal programmes. I just wish they'd put the documentary ones that Richard or, is it Richard or is it Dickie? Who's the one who didn't do Gandhi anyway, you know, the one who makes sense. <laughs> I just wish they'd put them on a bit later of a night because you, sort, you sit down with your tea and you turn the telly on and here's some animal documentary and there's two tree frogs <laughs> on a branch having a sh making love. <laughs> And the female of the species is eating a cockroach. And she sat there all bored. <laughs> Have you finished yet? <laughs> well, I've been there, I tell you. <laughs> it wasn't a cockroach, it was a saveloid now. It wasn't a tree, it was a bus stop. Welcome once again to Pet Power. Now, our first story tonight involves a house fire and a very brave dog indeed. Lily Savage from Birkenhead, somewhere up north, was asleep in her bed and she could have been roasted like a kebab until a little dog called Buster stepped in. Oh, I love animals. I always have. I must say, though, Buster's my favourite, you know. I mean, he's got his faults. He lets off in bed and he tries to shag your leg, but he's not a like that, to be quite honest. Our house is like a bloody zoo. She lets the dogs do what they like. The place stinks. And they pee everywhere. My man's got foam back carpets throughout. It's like walking on Hackney Marshes in our front room. In our reconstruction tonight, the parts of Lily, her sister Vera and her daughter Bunty are played by actors. We couldn't let the real lot do it because they are incapable of speaking the Queen's English. Gosh, Mr. Stewart, it is late. I wonder what's happened to Mummy. Five more minutes and I'm calling the Coast Guard. Who are you, Bunty, darling? It's only us. <laughs> Thank heavens! It's Lil Buster. I'm sorry I'm so late, my angel, but that WI's far and further whisk drive in aid of the homeless just went on forever. Still, we managed to raise £7.42p, which would solve their problems. <laughs> and Roger Soppet gave this slideshow on puffins and fumars. It was riveting. Grand. Hello, Art Veronica. Hello, love. Oh, absolutely. Grass monkeys out there. Freezing. Well, I built a big roaring fire. <laughs> built. Good heavens, look at the time. It's almost half past nine, and there's us chattering away. <laughs> the birth of the head is asleep in its bed. <laughs> Good night, darling. Good night, mums. 
Ah, well, I'm turning in too. How about you, Aunt Veronica? Yeah. Oh. Not but delightly. <laughs> no, not till I've had my Ovaltine and rustled up a little something on that unreliable kitchen appliance. <laughs> no, fear, you're incorrigible. Don't forget, fire guard on and um, unplug the television. <laughs> Anyway, we got in about half two in the morning. So it wasn't really a late night, you know. Half eight has got the munchies, as usual. So she's in and out the back kitchen making herself something to eat. The fridge doors opening and closing, opening and closing. Our neighbours must think we've got strobe lightning in the back kitchen. And then I get off to bed. Eventually, the Savage family fell asleep. But as they slumbered, a fire broke out in the kitchen. Luckily, though, help was at hand. What's that? Oh my god, what's happening? Oh no, oh, no. the chip hands on fire. Oh, come on, action stations, quick, come on, lad, get in there, my fellow. Get on, man. What's it do? What's the bloody number? Oh, uh, nine, nine, nine. Oh, quick, fire, Lily Savage's ass. Yeah. Come on, come on, my little, get out of bed. Come on, darling, let's have you up. Oh, no, she ain't collapsed behind the door. Oh, she has. Oh, no, 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 she ain't all right, I mean. Come on, Lil, 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 no slacker. Lil, there's a fire. Yeah. Fire? Yeah. Fire, fire, evacuate the house. Well, the rest, as they say, is history. And here they are, safe and sound, the Savage family. Well, obviously, well, I didn't it's much of that actress playing me, did you? She I didn't like it, did no, she? No, not at all. Oh, what about her playing me? I know. I mean, the jumper and I know. the flat shoes. I know. Yeah, I tell you what, oh. I thought she'd have dressed up a bit, wouldn't you? Money, no, 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 she's no, on and all. No, no, at the time, um, you had no idea that there was a fire in your house. No, not a clue, aren't there? No. Do you not have a smoke alarm? Well, we have got one, haven't we? Mm. But I mean, every time you put the frying pan on to fry a bit of bacon, it went off. You know what I mean? So it was a nuisance. It doesn't office. work anymore. Ah, but that's not my fault. I mean, I yeah. hit it with the mop a couple of times, but it doesn't work because I've either took the battery out for the, well, for the personal item. <laughs> Where is your sister Vera? Oh, she can't come on telly, aren't Why is that? Oh, no, she's wanted for an unpaid fine. <laughs> She'll be pig sick, you know, she's missed this because she loves the bones of you and this is a favourite oh. bone. <laughs> Thanks very much, you're very kind. Oh, don't get out your pram, love. She'll watch anything. Oh, she loves all bad, it's Arveda, you know, in that Vets programme. She wanted to be a vet, didn't she? Yeah. Right, I'll tell you this, Anthea. This is Arveda for you. One night she was coming home from the pub and she found this poor little pigeon in the gutter, covered in oil. So she brought it home, she gave it a wash under the tap. She fed it with an eye drop and milk and bread for two days. She wrapped it in a bit of flannel and she put it inside a metal coat and went to bed. And do you know what? That bed suffocated. <laughs> do you think we could just get back to the fire? No. Lily, are you a deep sleeper? Oh, she was in a coma. So would you after nine pints and a mogadon? <laughs> Don't be telling her my business. You say I don't normally get in this condition, Anthea, you know what I mean? But you see, what had happened was me and Arvira have been to an art gallery opening in Islington in the afternoon. I mean, I don't go to these things very often, do I? Because the food's always lousy. I mean, this one, this woman, she had ten illegal immigrants carving effigies of Tony Blair out to smoke salmon. I mean, how could we eat that? I can't eat salmon, can I? Well, I can if it's tin, but I don't like the real stuff. Anyway, so we get home, you see, and Arvira's ravenous. So she puts the chip pan on, lies on the couch, watches Open University and passes out. <laughs> Very northern. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, chip pans are the cause of 20% of domestic fires in the household. The fire brigade told us that, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, they did. See, this is what happened at Windsor Castle. Princess Margaret has been out in the ale rice with all the gales. <laughs> she comes in, bladdered, puts the chip pan on and passes out. Next thing, <laughs> Queen's Rollers is stuck to the pillowcase. This is what happened. <laughs> but Buster saved the day. Let's bring him on, ladies and gentlemen. Buster! A bit, bit smelly though. We've squirt some scent, will you, Bunty? You see what's happened? He's been rolling in our beard as dead pigeon again. I wish you'd be very nice, honestly, oh God. Come on, squirt a bit down. That's a good boy. Is that better for you now then? Yeah, I've always liked the smell of Jay's fluid. Oh. <laughs> Actually, it's my mother's own brand. It's called Flame of Lamb Dudden. No. And bag size. It's more like bleach to me. Oh. You should know, love. You've had enough on your head. <laughs> Do 
you have gone now one step too far and I've had enough. Thanks. What have I said? Right, I'm stopping this recording now. Thanks. I want the director down here on the floor. Get me security. <laughs> and you, you little cow, <laughs> you hey, that smelly dog <gasps> and your slut of a mother. And you can both go back to that burnt out oh, robot, you what trailer you park trash ball. Oh, now get out of here, you know it. God, my enemy. Steed. Mrs. Peel. Sir Rupert Pettigrew. Top man in the ministry responsible for the DF-118 Tamazipan rifle. <laughs> Murdered. Stabbed in the chest with a carving knife during the night by an unknown assassin. Mrs. Peel, your powers of deduction are astounding. Not at all. I met his cleaner on the way in. <laughs> but what I can deduce, Steed, is that you're bevied again. This is Meal. Uh, Mrs. Peel. Steve, it's half past eight in the morning. The programme's only just started and you're wiring your way into a bottle of champagne. I see you've drunk one already. Excellent vintage. Chin chin. Steve, you've got a bloody cheek. It's not even your flat and you're helping yourself to the ale. I'm sick of it, Steve. Every single scene we do, we've got a drink in our hands. I'm too pissed to fight. <laughs> well, all fighting, all I do is this. <laughs> I killed to smash somebody in the gob. <laughs> it's not first, Steed. Tara King got to punch and headbutt. That's right, Mrs. Beale. You take the weight off your feet. Spread yourself decoratively over the furniture the way you always do. I don't loll around from choice, you know, Steed. It's this bloody leather cat suit. It's agony. And I'm all chafed. And as for going the lab, forget it. I mean, look at me. I'm constructed out of leather, foam rubber and steel boning. What am I? A secret agent or a three-piece suite from Corpse? <laughs> oh, you, Steed. Oh, my, up another piss ad. <laughs> Nasty business. Now, just ignore me, by all means. I mean, I suppose it's an everyday occurrence. A six-foot woman had to toe in black leather. Poor oh, Pettigrew. Mrs. Peel, check the man's diary. Mm. Ah, excellent cognac, though. Monday. Got up, went to work, came home, had me tea, watched Branwell, went to bed. <laughs> Tuesday. Got up, rang in sick, spent afternoon dressed in panties and bra in the privacy of bedroom. <laughs> Nothing unusual there, just the actions of an ordinary civil servant. <laughs> Good Lord, what's that? What does it look like? Well, it's hard and greasy. Very unpleasant, actually. Michael Portillo? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> mm. So is this where they found the body? What do you think, Mrs. Peel? They'll never get that out. <laughs> we tried to break down the blood albumin with a solution of cold salt water, but it wouldn't shift. You see, it's a dry stain. You could dry household ammonia, tap it on gently, and then sponge it off with cold water, Colonel. Or you could write to Bella. You know the magazine? They have a household hints page. They're jolly useful when I had water retention. <laughs> so good. Mm. But who would want to kill Pettigrew? Any ideas, Colonel? Male, six foot tall, early twenties, blonde, swimmer's body, possibly wearing Lycra cycle shorts and Dr. Martin's. Is that what we're looking for? No, that's what I'm looking for. Only <laughs> two.
hired assassin? No, Jehovah's Witness. I do know what's really banging on the door to get back at home. Listen, you shout at home, don't be writing in complaining over the Jehovah's Witness remark. Thank you very much. Because they will, you know, they're writing in droves because it was only a joke, you know. I mean, I've got, listen, see, I've got great respect for, for religion. Whatever path you take for spiritual enlightenment is your own business. You go to your church, I'll go to mine. Just don't bang on me door at half ten in the morning to tell me. <laughs> The Mormons have got the right idea, haven't they? They're always a bit glamorous. And then they knock on the door and there's two big blondes in, in dark suits, like two porn stars. <laughs> <laughs> Can I do anything for you? So you can rip me vest off and roll me down the lobby for starters. <laughs> <laughs> so don't be getting the on, please, honestly, because I didn't mean it. And I did do my penance in that leather cat suit because I couldn't go to the lab for nine hours. <laughs> it was agony. And I did all my own stunts, you know. Well, I had to, because some of the places I've worked in the past, you needed to be able to fight. Seriously. <laughs> oh, oh, it wasn't always a life of luxury on the BBC. Oh, no. I was up that motorway. Rough audiences, dressing rooms, that stunk. Lousy fees. That was just Pebble Mill at one. <laughs> You know, if you're on telly, you're not allowed to have a life. Oh, no. You're supposed to, like, do your job and go home and get in a little box. You're not supposed to live. You know what I mean? I mean, you're not... If you have a skeleton in your cupboard, God help you. I've got a bloody graveyard, let alone skeletons. <laughs> got the paparazzi taking photos of you. And we've all done things in the past we regret. I mean, we've all done our jobs. Julian Cleary started out as a professional wrestler, you know. He did. His stage name was Mick McManus. Honest to God, it was Julian. <laughs> so one terrible night, he got a punch in the ring. He was never the same again. <laughs> never the same again. I mean, and I've done things, you know, like I was an adesiast when I was young. An adesiast, you know, a skin shedder, a stripper. Where the bloody hell did you get this audience from, for God's sake? No, I did it for years. I mean, Gabby Roslin was a stripper. No, I'm telling you, nobody ever believes me when I say about Gabby Roslin and the Tootin' Beck Twirler. She was fabulous. <laughs> No, I mean, I first met Gabby when I worked in a, in a theatre called... Well, it was a club called Minsky's Burlesque. <laughs> rough. No, rough, honestly. Small theatre, low-life dive, seriously full of hard women. And here's me, a neophyte stripper of... Oh, I'm using big words, it's a nice, aren't I? I'm just as well as a Roger Cesaris. A neophyte stripper. <laughs> a mere innocent. And I was taken under the wing of these three hard bitten strippers who today are well-known people on television. So, let's have a look at them. This'll curl your hair. Go on, roll tape. <laughs> What do you want? For God's sake, come in! <laughs> Who are you? Oh, hello, I'm the new quarter scale. Oh, my God, Bella, I didn't know we were doing Annie this week. I ignore their love. She's always the same when she's hungover. <laughs> nice to meet you, Bella the Hun. Speciality, leather strip. I do a strip in none and play Idlevice on a watering can as well. <laughs> this is Gabby Roselyn, the tooting Beck twirler. How long have you been stripping, kid? Well, actually, I've just finished a highly successful season at the Hot Voodoo Bar and Grill. <laughs> and a featured spot. Oh, I bet you did. Yeah. Beef dripping? W what's this for? Rub it in. It keeps them supple. You've got to look after them when you're a tassel twirler. Solid gold, these presumes are mine. Solid gold, girl. Here, look at these pans. They're supposed to be premium ostrich plumes. But if you can like, they don't flitter when you do. But just down. Ruins the artistic effect. Oh, didn't you go down well then, dear? Died on me arse. <laughs> well, you see, the audience is very uncouth. I mean, they don't understand, let alone recognise the finer points for professionals' artistry and skill. It's just the opposite for me. I just have to stand there and they sit open masked. It's called yawning, dear. <laughs> mm, nasty love bite. Has anyone seen my snake? Oh, you could hardly miss a 15-foot Rob Hyphen. Rita! Rita! <laughs> we reptiles. <laughs> I don't suppose it'd be too much to ask you, bunch of old flappers. You've got to have your presence on stage. We've got an Act Two opener, after all. Um, excuse me, uh, what do I wear? 
Girlie, do I look like a wardrobe mistress? I don't know. Ask your mother. Come on, girls, show time. <laughs> Topped it with much skill. And once you've tried my special dish, you'll never get your fill. Take ten terrific girls, but only nine costumes, and you're cooking up something grand. Mix in some amber lights and elegant scenery and stir in a fine jazz band. We'll get at some funny men and pepper with laughter. It's tart and tasty, I know. And then serve it piping hot. And what have you got? A burlesque show. And ten delightful dishes on the illuminated runway of joy. Meet Junie Mae Brown, the girl with the million dollar smile. Bountiful <laughs> Bella the Hound with those two twinkling eyes. The lovely Gabby Rose Lynn, the little girl who wants to know is it a sin to be so friendly? <laughs> You know, Gabby Rosen's one of my best mates. Uh, we did that breakfast thing together at four in the morning, sat there, give it in. And then um, she can't be with us this evening because at this moment she's having a well earned break in a private health clinic in LA. But thanks to these satellite things, we're going to go over now and speak to her. So if you're ready, I'll just try and contact her. I feel like Donna Stokes. Are you there, Gabby? <laughs> Gabby? Are you there, Gab? Can you hear me? Are you there? <laughs> oh, hello, Clive. No. <laughs> no, Gabby, it's not Clive, it's Lily. Lily Savage. Yes, remember. How are you getting on, Gabby? Oh, it's, it's lovely. It's very nice here. It's great here. Ah, it's nice God. here. Ah. And the staff, they're lovely here. Oh, yeah. They, they give me pocket money, and, and I'm now working in raffia in <laughs> occupational therapy. Oh, that's nice. It's yeah. great. Yeah, lovely. Yeah. Lily. What? Lily, get me out of here! I want a drink! Please, just one Gabby, calm shit. down. For God's sake, make me show yourself on television. Gabby, me. get out of here! Direct Caroline's looking.